I'm Tony Yellenardo with the National Wildlife Federation. We're here in the Capitol Visitor Center in the U.S. Congress, where today uh, a series of experts, including our own CEO and President Larry Schweiger, are going to do a presentation for media and uh, congressional staffers on what's happening in the Gulf Coast, some of the dangers that they've witnessed firsthand, and some of the policy solutions that they'd like to see. Should be an interesting se session. Larry has just gotten back from, I believe, his second trip there, so he'll have some very personal observations. Uh, and uh, the rest of the panel as well have uh, very deep and direct ties. Uh, and so it should be, as I say, uh, I think a very interesting and sort of heartfelt session about what Congress can do to respond to this ongoing tragedy. There's nothing like seeing something in person as compared to seeing images on a television screen or on a computer. And I remember getting on uh, the boat that first morning. And it's kind of this anticipatory feeling. And so a few miles into it, you know that it's coming soon, right? And then you see it. And then you smell it. And then, you know, we have to shut down the engines, and we're floating through it. Uh, I still remember, Larry, the call uh, I got from you uh, in April when we went from the first BP estimate of the size of the spill, which was zero, not a thousand, not a thousand barrels, but zero, uh, to, uh, to a thousand barrels, and you wanted to get right down there. Uh, we tried uh, to help people understand that the bulk of the oil was actually under the water, not on the surface of the water. You know, the first uh, wildlife we started seeing were um, the uh, man of wars that started floating to the surface, and then we saw uh, the, the endangered turtles coming by and eating these contaminated man of war. In this pool, a two, you know, mile, two mile large pool of oil that was so still, and indeed it was very eerie because there was nothing alive there. There weren't any, there was nothing. There weren't any fish jumping. There weren't any birds following us around there. It was, it was, it was like a dead zone. And sometimes we miss uh, just how important this area is. So the Mississippi River Delta, coastal Louisiana, is 3.4 million acres of marsh, swamp, and barrier islands. And that's 30% of the coastal wetlands in the lower 48 states. Uh, we've heard about its importance to the bird populations, to uh, something 10 million ducks and geese uh, over winter in uh, coastal Louisiana. It's vitally important for tropical birds. Unfortunately, we, we in Louisiana are already in trouble before the spill. We are losing land at a very rapid rate. Now the oil spill is seeping into marshes and will only speed up our problem. The Gulf of Mexico is a much richer and more important place than many other comparably sized bodies of water. Or you might think of it for, for square mile, per square mile, the Gulf is an unusually important place because there are many animals that live out in the open ocean most of the year that go into the Gulf as their only breeding area. We feel that this, uh, these restoration projects uh, should be funded by BP, up to $5 billion. We called for the president to include that in the escrow account because the, uh, the oil that is coming in and killing the marshes, as Larry talked about, um, really can't be cleaned up. And so instead, this area needs to be restored. It needed to be restored before the oil spill, and it's even more urgent now. Without immediate action, the communities along the Louisiana coast may disappear. And with these communities, the cultures, ways of life, and traditions of recreational, commercial hunting and fishing may vanish forever. And I personally think it's a strong message that we need to adopt a new energy uh, policy for this country that caps uh, emissions, that uh, eventually weans us away from uh, imported oil, uh, that allows us to store carbon from uh, those energy sources that uh, need carbon storage and to recharge our economy, and I think also to dedicate funding for wildlife and other conservation values. Uh, as people were filing out of the room, I was hearing them uh, say that they'd learned a lot and uh, they were going to take those lessons, in many cases, yeah. back to the members of Congress whom they work for. Uh, the reporters that I talked to uh, as they were leaving as well uh, said they were going to be filing stories for respective audiences. Uh, these lessons, hopefully, will also translate into policy and legislation, clean energy legislation, legislation that protects coasts, uh, legislation that helps wildlife to survive this awful disaster. Uh, so we uh, look forward to taking these lessons and, and uh, drawing from them the conclusions that hopefully avert these sorts of disasters, but also hope hopefully bring about a cleaner energy future so that we don't have these disasters again. To learn more, go to nwf.org slash oilspill.